Windows 10 is here, and it's actually pretty good. It's basically got something for everyone. There's a bit of Windows 8's touch friendliness, but it's also just as good with a keyboard and mouse as Windows 7. Microsoft clearly listened to many of the complaints about Windows 8. The start menu is back. Many people hated Windows 8's start screen because it was a huge change from what they were used to, and honestly, it didn't make much sense if you didn't have a touchscreen computer. The new start menu should look familiar to anyone who's used Windows 7, but it also features the live tiles from Windows 8 and Windows Phone. You can customize to your liking, making the start menu bigger or smaller. You can also change how you want the live tiles to look. But if you ended up liking Windows 8's interface, you can also revert to that start screen instead. Windows 10 can also switch between tablet and traditional desktop modes easily, which is useful for devices like the Surface or other two-in-one computers. Just yank off the keyboard, and the interface will change a bit to make it a little more tablet-friendly. Uh, you kind of lose a bit of a taskbar at the bottom, and all of the apps go full screen. So that's actually really useful for weird devices like this. On top of that, there are also two major new additions to Windows 10, uh, Cortana, Microsoft's virtual assistant, and a new web browser called Edge. Cortana is a lot like Siri and Google Now, except with a slightly more personal twist. Um, by default, Cortana is always listening for your commands, uh, but you can turn that off if you want. So all I have to do is say, hey Cortana, what do you think about Siri? I think it's cool that she's out there trying to make people's lives a little easier. <laughs> Oh, that's sweet. Edge is pretty much a clean break for Microsoft. It doesn't support any of the legacy protocols from Internet Explorer, and it finally supports browser extensions. Overall, it feels about as fast as Google Chrome. It's also a cleaner looking browser than either Chrome or Firefox these days. It's hard to believe it comes from the same company that gave us Internet Explorer. Edge also does a few unique things. It has Cortana baked right into the address bar, so you can get answers to questions right there. You can also highlight and annotate web pages and save them directly to OneNote. Microsoft also refreshed a few of its apps, like Mail and Xbox. They're universal now, so these are the same apps that are going to run on Windows Phone later this year. Gamers will also appreciate changes to the Xbox app. You can now stream games right from the Xbox One to any Windows 10 PC. Right now, that only works on your local network, and eventually it'll also work with the Xbox 360. That's the real power behind Windows 10. Microsoft has finally made its dream of building a platform that can run across multiple devices easily a reality. So do you need Windows 10? Uh, in a word, yes. Uh, it's a free upgrade for existing Windows 7 and 8.1 users for the next year. And uh, even if you've installed it then, you can still keep using it for free after that. Overall, it's the cleanest and fastest version of Windows I've used so far. It brings the best of Windows 7 together with some of the elements of Windows 8 that actually worked. And it'll feel comfortable to anybody who's ever used Windows before. I can't really think of a reason not to upgrade, unless you have a really old computer. But if that's the case, then maybe it's time for an upgrade.